Hey everyone, and welcome to Without Code. My name is Steve Harris, and today we're going to look at the new tabbed panels widget. Now this widget was built specifically based on your requests on Facebook, so please keep those requests rolling in. I think this widget came out beautifully. As you can see here, we have a tab section where if we click on any of the tabs, it brings up a unique layout where we have a unique photo, headline, body copy, and then of course a link to another section. So let's go ahead and jump into the architect editor and I'll show you how to set this widget up. Okay, so I'm here on our premium law firm template and I'm gonna scroll down to a section that says practice areas. What I'd like to do is kind of replicate this section by using a tabbed panels widget. So what I'm gonna do first, of course, is go to the widgets panel and I'll just scroll down and drag out a tabbed panel widget. Okay, perfect. So there's my tabbed panel widget. And if I move this over so we can see it a little better, you can see it comes pre-set up with a few tabs. And now we just need to work through the panel to apply our various design and content settings. So starting at the top, we have tab alignment. It's a drop down, and we could select center or right, and that moves the tabs on the entire box. So I'm gonna leave that set at left for now. Then we need to expand each tab area and fill in the content as needed. So underneath tab one, we have the ability to enable or disable the whole tab itself. Then we can change the label. This is what you're going to see in the actual tab. So if I change that to litigation, it shows up there in the tab. Next up, we have the headline below. So again, I'm going to just say litigation as the headline in that tab. Then we have a tab description below that. Right now, it's just got some lorem ipsum in there, and that's fine for me. Then we have the ability to enable an image and a link. So let's just turn the image on and then we get kind of a thumbnail placeholder and it says by default, the recommended size here is 180 by 180. Now we could actually upload a bigger image. So I've preloaded in an image here. And as you can see, when I place it in, it is a little bit bigger than that size, but we can actually change the image size within the design settings in the widget. So no need to worry there. Then of course we have the image alt text for SEO reasons. We could apply that there. Then we have the image alignment, so we could go left or right. I'm gonna leave my images on the right. And let's go ahead and turn on a link as well. So when I turn that on, you'll see we get a link down below that says read more. We can change that text here, and we can also change what that links to. So it could link to an existing page, an outside page, a pop-up, an email, or even a file for download. So now I've set up the content for my first tab. You just need to work through each tab, setting up the content as you need, and we've enabled up to six different tabs within the widget. Next up, let's go into the design settings. So under the design tab, first up we've got tab styling. So when I open that up, it gives us our kind of standard text styling options. And if I change this font, let's say to able, you can see that the tab styling section is actually controlling the look and feel of the tabs themselves, not the content within. So as I continue to scroll down, we've got some padding settings. If we want wider tabs, we've got vertical padding settings. So that's looking pretty good right there. Then we've got a tab border. Right now it's set to one pixel and gray. So we could add quite a thick border or we could do something completely minimal like that. I'm gonna leave it set at about one pixel. That looks perfect. Then of course we have the tab background color. So we've got a default color, which is kind of going to be the color you're seeing all the time. Then we can set active background colors. So we could have a different color, of course, depending on whether the tab you've selected is currently showing. I kind of like the style it is right now with kind of the gray and then a white active tab. So I'm gonna leave that as is. Then we have a tab divider border, which is this kind of lower border on the bottom of the tabs. We can change those settings as well. Below that, we have content styling settings. So if I open up the drop down there, there we've got our text settings for the actual headline and body copy themselves. So right now the headline is open sans. We could go able, let's bring it up to 36. So bigger headline. If I keep scrolling down, description text, I'm gonna make it the same, able. We'll keep it small like that. Then we've got some padding options if we wanna kind of space this out a little bit differently and add some space in between things. And we have the image settings here. So we can actually apply a bit of a frame to the image. Right now it's set to a square. We could make it a rounded corner image or even a circle. So I'm gonna leave it as a circle, just like that. And of course we could change the width. So this is going to keep the image proportionate so it's not skewing or being pulled in strange ways. So I'm just gonna drop the width down to something like that. Next up, we have some options for setting borders. We can apply a border here. And then if you click the little gear icon, 
beside any of these settings, it gives you options for setting borders on different sides. Same thing with rounded corners. Then we have a shadow we could apply to the image. Sure, that looks good. I'll leave it turned on. Next up, link styling. So this is where we can change this little read more link. So right now it's set to our kind of standard font. I'm going to bump it up in terms of size. And we can actually remove the underline there. And I'm going to make this look more like a button. So right now we have a background that we can apply to it. We have a border and then some border settings. So I'm going to bring up a border on the button. Let's just do a one pixel border. I'm going to round the corners on that border. I'm going to give it a little bit of horizontal and vertical padding there to make it look more like a button. Then of course we could set a background color for that button. So if we did something like that, that's gray. So it's up to you to style your button as you see fit, but it's a nice option that you have so much style control around this read more link so that you can apply a button to these tab panels. I'm going to bring the font size of that button down a little bit. It seems to stand out. And the last option we have, of course, is just kind of the standard spacing options that we have that will affect the widget itself and the space around it. So as you can see, tons of style options and content options for the tab panels widget. I think this came together really well and I'm excited to see it used in your websites. Thanks again for watching and enjoy this widget.